I've been asked to give you uh, indications of the type of portfolios that we're looking for and the sort of standard that we're looking at and also the assessment requirements because um, so I'm part of the one of the larger teams of people academic staff who's assessing portfolios for master's level um, for so unfortunately we had to sort through a lot of portfolios um, at the moment something like 160 so it's quite a big volume. Now, today's really kind of a uh, tips of do and don'ts of what not to do in your portfolio. And some of you may not even have started to put a portfolio together. So really just kind of cover the basic of it. Um, so most of you will have already visited this website, which is the MSDU site that tells you how to apply for the course, which I've already kind of talk about, and also discuss the application checklist, which you need to kind of adhere to. Today, I'm really just going to talk about the two of them here, which is the most important one, the personal statement and the design portfolio. Those are the two together with the transcript that all the assessor will be looking at. Now, on the same website, you will have also, there's also other content on design portfolio. So today, I'm going to give you a little bit more in-depth um, details about what we're looking for. So for those of you who doesn't know a portfolio, is a creative act showing your skills and imaginations, but it is also an act of communication and a tools for self-promotions, demonstrating originality and inventiveness, but also accept the restrictions and conventions of professionalism and show that you can get your ideas across in terms that works that working architects and designers can understand. So key works here are demonstrate originality and inventiveness. Okay, so it's about a self-promoting ideas. Another key word is professionalism. Okay, that means that you need to present your portfolio in a very clean and concise manner that working architects like me, like all my other colleagues, will be able to pick up a portfolio and understand it. So there is also a certain amount of conventions. Now you may find it kind of overwhelming, but really in the last three years of education in a bunch of environments, that's what you've been taught. So it's really about demonstrating all that skills and put them into one collective pay, um, set of documents. So the, the portfolios is really a collection of your assets. So in this things, your design work. It shows your skills and thinking as a designer, and that's really important because it's about how you communicate. So how well do you communicate your ideas? All right. And it is a project in its own right. This is a project that you start now for MSD. You will continue on throughout your MSD. After you finish your MSD, you will still need to work on it because you need to use it for applying jobs. Some of you may already started to already apply for a year of work, and you you notice that all employees employers effectively require you to have a portfolio. All right. So a couple of things: um, portfolios requirements. It shouldn't be more than ten megabytes. Um, maximum pages is fifteen pages. And we recommend three to five, four project, three projects here, but I would suggest three to four projects. And portfolio should be a PDF, a single document PDF, A3 landscape. All right? And we will be evaluating it digitally, i.e. we'll be looking at it on screen. So anything that's less than a pixel, we're not going to be able to read it. All right? So if you can't read it on your screen, we can't read it. So then you need to kind of consider, well, if I put all this effort and time into something that nobody can read, what's the point, right? All right, so on the other side, on your right-hand side, there's a series of criteria that we use to assess your portfolio. So the three criteria are, one, the evidence of three-dimensional thinking. Now that doesn't mean that how many funky forms I can generate in my portfolio. It actually really talks about a number of different issues, all the way from planning, whether you can three -dimension, think three-dimensionally in planning terms, i.e. how you plan the building. If you show a plan that doesn't work, make sure you work on it and before you submit it because we do look at plans. I'll show you a few examples afterward. Um, inside that criteria, we're also looking for variation of scale of projects. And you will know that from your environment subjects, you cover throughout the different design studio a number of different scale of projects and different sites. So make sure you demonstrate that. And there's a kind of coherency and readability of layout. And that's what we meant by professionalism. Image needs to be clear. Um, you can find all this actually on the MSD website. Um, this metrics is actually on the website itself. 
The second criteria that we judge you on is evidence of conceptual thinking. Um, that means that you need to not just present your sketches. Sometimes sketches are great to communicate to your tutor, but when you are speaking to an assessor which is effectively remote, like me, who I don't know your work, um, you need to explain a little bit more than just dumping sketches into the portfolio pages. We need to look at how these appropriate compositions, procedures, your design strategies. We're also looking for coherent images and description of each design project. I.e. we're also looking for whether the project is being taught through from start to finish. And that leads to the last point, which is evidence of design resolutions. That a lot of people think that design resolution means if I chuck in a lot of constructions drawing, that's enough to satisfy that criteria. Design resolutions, the word emphasis here is the word designed. It means how resolved is your building. It doesn't mean how technically resolved it is. It can be technically resolved, but it can also be designed in design terms, it's not resolved. All right, so you need to look at your prof project and look at it, whether it's actually design-wise, is it actually resolved, all right? So those are the things that we look for. And in that, we look for the expressions of um, design process, whether there's an enjoyment or delights. Now, these are very subjective terms. We're trying to, as much as we can, because we look at a lot of portfolio, we can start to make a judgment and compare one to the other. So they're all relative and moderated in that sense. And the degree of resolution is in the pragmatic um, factors, such as sites, programs, circulations, and spatial dimensions, whether they actually make sense, whether your project is completely out of scale or within scale. So those are kind of criteria. A few of things that do and don'ts. Um, now these are, let's say, not on that matrix, if you like, but these are kind of things that we generally look for because it's implied in the matrix, okay? So if you can, do include a very short CV on your content page. Because it means that we can start to, when we're assessing your portfolio, we understand where you're coming from. Some of you may already have a year out. Some of you may have a part-time job. I have people who apply who already have a you know, professional um, photography studio that's already been set out. That is part of your credential. Make sure it is about self-promoting at the end of the day. Make sure you add that to your list. The second thing is make sure you have at least three to four academic design projects. Now the emphasis here is academic design project. A lot of people sometimes show one academic design project and then three or four others that's done in the practice. Now we always raise questions about those and they're always with pull out because and they always take a long time to assess because we don't know whether um, these are your work or these are not your work. All right, so you make sure the academic um, design project. There needs to be at least three to four of them. And then you should have enough, even you know, for, for bachelor environments. Layout should be professional. This should not be layout in, this should be layout in design or similar software and demonstrate a sensibility of care. And that means care about the type of image that goes in, care about the type of um, graphic sensibilities that goes in. Demonstrate a wide range of skill sets. This include hand drawing, sketches, model making skills, construction drawing drawings, photography, renders, etc. All right? So you want to have a large repertoire of work. Basically, you want to demonstrate to people that you can do the various different types of work, i.e. you have the foundation to get into the MSD. Because the last thing we will be teaching in the Melbourne School of Design is to teach you how to draw sections. So we expect people to come in with a skill or knowledge to draw sections and articulate the sections. Okay? Now that's a very different thing. Knowing to draw a section and articulate a section is quite different. In a group or professional work, so if you do group work or you have kind of professional work from your office, make sure you state your roles and responsibility. That's really important. As I said before, they have to be academic projects. If you do include works from your office that you're working in as a year out, make sure you put it in. What is your role? Don't just show us beautiful render because we know that compared to your third year graduate work, that is most impossible to achieve. So we know that this is probably not your work, but you need to be very clear. Do I, you, do I just participate in the model making aspect? Do I just make diagrams? Do I draw the plan? Do I just draw the sections? Annotate your drawings and images. I'll show you some example that doesn't have that. Include any links to personal project website or video. Some of you will have, as I say, already have uh, um, outside credentials. Do include them in. It's down to us whether we want to click on that button or not. 
but if it's a PDF, all the links should be embedded in there. Okay, so, so nowadays it's very easy to use. Proofread your document and spell check it. Please do that. There's a lot of um, auto smart corrections nowadays on words. That means that the word cheese could also be spelled as chest, a very different word meaning, but there's just one character missing, all right? Over, don't actually complicate your layout with a lot of graphics design. You're not a graphic designer, you're not applying to be a graphic designer, you're applying into an architecture course. My suggestion generally is unless you can handle graphic very well, avoid the very heavy dark background or multiple images background. I'll show you some examples afterward that actually has very delightful, simple graphic layout, but very powerful, very simple, very strong. Don't overcrowd a page with a lot of image or tiny photos. And please, no poor render of drawings. Use your best drawings and image. It is about self-promoting. It's about promoting who you are, what you're best at. If you want to really show a poor image, you're kind of underselling yourself. No pixelated image, and avoid spelling mistakes and grammar error. And obviously, do not have file accessing more than 10 megabytes and make sure that you print your PDF not as a spread, but as a single pages. Okay, and maximum is 15 pages. We have one portfolio last week that is 50 pages long, and we just rejected it, all right, on that basis, because it's not fair. You know, why does someone actually, why do we have to sit through and look at someone's 50 pages while others spend all their time to condense it down to 15 pages? It's a lot of work to condense it down to 15 pages. All right, so let's show you some example. These are collections of images, portfolio pages. They are actually p actual page layout that I just simply take from the last few semesters of um, portfolio collections or the applicants. Also give you a sense of standard that we're looking at. Also give you a sense of competitions that you're against with. So cover page, make sure that you have a content. Make sure you write a very simple um, short CV Please include, if you have other educations, qualifications, do say, state in your CV. If you have any, you know, obviously write down what your software skills are, what is your other skills are, all right? So here's our, some images. Um, these are very simple page layouts, all right? One single image as a starting introduction. Bang, it's very powerful. It captures all the assessors' eyes, right? We not need to study in more detail. A very short descriptions on the top, and a very simple project titles. Nothing fancy, all right? You don't need to be fancy because your work should be enough, good enough to speak for itself, okay? And we expect that at this sort of level. When you have multiple diagrams, you started to show a level of conceptual thinking. You can start to show a series of diagrams that actually started to talk about how your project get articulated. Sections, you can see that in these pages alone, there's already a multitude of scales that we can look at, all right? There's already a sense of uh, care in terms of the graphic sensibility. Look at the, fine, the fineness of the line work, all right? Look at the ability to actually reference sections to key. So we already understand that these people, these applicants already understand the sense of three-dimensional thinking very instantly, okay? And it very clearly be able to communicate its idea, his ideas or her idea. Again, the same project, series of sections that cuts through it with references and plans that actually works. If a plan doesn't work from your design project, these people, uh, most of publicans, including myself, when I was preparing my own portfolio about 15, 20 years ago now, um, you do go back and rework them. Okay, it's not because I finished my week 12 assessment, great, I'm just gonna pull it out and dump it into the page. Sometimes you need to go back to the drawing and rework them Make sure that your project actually works. We do go through some of this plan and occasionally spots rather strange way of arranging things. Another very simple layout page. Axonometrics tends to draw, show very well. Here you can start to see from an assessor point of view already a sense of design resolutions. The ability to actually articulate fineness in the drawings, in the project, and the complexity of the spaces. Okay, I'm not here to judge about the quality of the design work. I'm really here to tell you what a page layout really ought to have. Talk about your site. Tell us where your site is. I know most, all of you have done air, all of you have done water, all of you have some sparks or fire. It doesn't necessarily mean that we understand your site. There are very particular things that you want to highlight. 
or the way that you actually respond to your site. So please tell us where your site is. You don't need to uh, spend an entire page on a site, just a little image will do. Yeah. Now, again, drawings like this tell us that you can resolve details. Drawings like this also tell us that you don't know how to detail foundations. All right, so we be very careful what you show. Okay, um, again, more drawings that shows the similar projects. We again, it's very short descriptions. Annotations is very important, and annotations are very, they're simple and short. Key titles to the drawings means that we can immediately read it and actually understand where you're coming from. All right. Here's one draw, one, one images that actually uses a background. I think this is subtle enough, right? It doesn't actually distract from the actual um, graph layout of the page. The content are still very readable. The plan are very readable. This is the sort of level of graphic resolution that we're looking at, okay? So they're not pixelated images. So, Tell us your project details, you know, where, what is all the kind of content, whether you work in a group of two people, or work in a group of three people. Do tell us that the information that it, you, is required about each of the projects. I'll talk a little bit later on about how you write very simple project detail descriptions. You don't need a lot, sometimes a lot of images to tell what the buildings look like. One or two very good images is enough to sell your project. I'll show you, um, the, la the worst thing is that you can tile the entire page with about 15 images and they're all random images of your project, all right? So always pick the best one, choose the right layout. Just go back, choose enough details that you can actually show how a very simple construction detail will work against your building. That always helps to kind of tell us the confidence in terms of whether this applicants could actually detail the building. Construction is going to be quite a key aspect of what we're looking at as well. And it is actually underlined within the criteria of design resolutions. A bit closer to home. So this is from Studio Water. Um, again, look at the graphic layout of a single page. There are enough balance of text, enough balance of diagrams to show the conceptual thinking, understanding of design resolutions in terms of circulatory um, arrangements, understanding of spaces, okay? We're not talking about the quality of the spaces, but at least the AI images to show so what is the space look like. And obviously, a very clear image of what the site, the site quality as well. If you have um, physical model, do photograph them and include them in. So this is one way that one could actually include physical model as part of the portfolio presentation. Trying to avoid just showing images of the physical model on its own without any drawings, without any plans or annotations that goes with it, okay? Because that section, the, the compositions of the combinations of sections, plan elevations, as well as physical, uh, physical models helps to kind of enrich the story and enrich the projects. Okay, again, so very si again, this is another example of a very simple layout, but with enough kind of photograph of very well done um, models. You don't, again, you don't need a lot of them, you just need one or two images, that's all it takes. But make sure that the image are on very simple, consistent background, and there's a kind of a sharpness to the photos, yeah? If you want to present um, professional images, so this comes from the office, you can start to see the jump, and if you can see the jump, we can pick up the jump as well. And we will see that, oh, this project is not obviously a student's work. It is a professional collaboration, or you work for someone else. But do tell us where it actually comes from. What, are, what is the main role that you involve in this instance, the main designer involving all presentation work. I would like to probably see a little bit more detail, i.e., do you do this image? If so, what software do you use? And well, how, how, how do you actually start to articulate that? Okay? So make sure you include your roles and responsibility in any kind of collaborative work, office work, or collaborative projects. If you have sketches, please include them. I will always advise that any sort of hand sketches be edited. 
So you scan them in, you make sure the background is consistent so I don't see your rule lines on your sketchbook. Um, graphically turn them into readable diagrams so one could actually understand it and but most importantly annotate it. The worst thing we always get is people just dumping sketchbook, uh, sketchbooks on the portfolio without any annotations and we end up having to turn around the page going, what is this about? You know, and we end up having to decipher your project for you. That's a clear sign of very bad communications. Do I put construction uh, information in? Yes, you can. Sometimes a very simple section with, uh, with a cutaway section and a render will actually show more information than that. If you do decide to put this in, we used to have portfolio where half of the portfolio just shows construction drawings. That's really problematic because we don't actually understand design. This is, you're applying to the Melbourne School of Design. You're not applying to the Melbourne School of Construction. All right, so you need to understand where we are look, looking at and what we're looking at, the criteria we're looking at. If you do show construction drawing, please make sure that the line weights are actually beautifully done. This is actually quite poor in the sense that every single line are actually almost identical line weight. Because you want to also start to show people that you can articulate a drawing as well. All right. This is what I mean, but please do not print on spread. So you, we end up getting this on our screen. And we have photographs which are less than a pixel, which no one can actually read. Uh, when I actually extract it out, I can't, I can't actually read what is those actual text is about on the bottom of this image. All right. So you spend all this time, and when you print it out, you just you know, so make sure you actually check when you actually print out your PDF that it's not on spread, it's actually on individual page. You can clearly see that this applicant has actually set it out. Well, I'm, I'm kind of giving her a benefit of doubt that she's actually set out on a kind of grid line in there, but the more you look at it, the more that you find that yeah, she's actually set it out on a very off page layout. Okay, and try not to jam too much information into one page. This whole entire page up until this point talks about site. It's three quarter of a page to describe your site. Is that really necessary? You have 15 pages to show how good you are. Anybody can tell me what's wrong with this? Thank you. Yeah, you all know what's the problem, right? So you need to be able to be able to see that in your own work. Exactly, no annotations. So that's me going out to say, and going thinking, is this uh, is this Axel this one or that one? Yeah? Can someone tell me what's wrong with this? Yeah, a, a few kind of issue, right? Um, lack of annotations, there's uh, variations of design. We like to see design options, but there is a certain point where um, design options, like say, just become a spillage of information. You need to be able to contain it. I will try to generally advise that you don't show images of built projects by other people, especially if you're not going to credit them. Okay? A simple precedence study by some chapel by someone else, you really need to tell us where the reference is, otherwise you're actually copying their work. All right? You're actually using their images as part of your portfolio. Be very careful. All right? When you do tell, show your grasshopper definitions from air, please give us a definition, uh, explanation of what it is rather than just a little icon on the top that says that I know how to use grasshopper. Given that you all come from bachelor environments and you all have done air, we know that you should be able to use grasshopper to a certain degree. What we really want to know is how do you use it and what is the idea behind it. And then I put a lot of circles on the top. These are text which is 50 words long and about six spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. All right, make sure you double check them. Some of them are very easy to make, yeah? No, but you need to be able to proofread your portfolio to make sure there is no issues with it. Same problem with this one. A lot of, um, let's say, um, options, but no real conclusions in, about, about what the project is. And we are really looking for a designer who can make decisions, who can make judgment, right? If a designer can't make decisions and judgment, a designer are never really that resolved, okay? 
So make sure that you be able to tell us that if it has a lot of options, design options, do tell us why did you pick the last one or the whichever options that you pick from and, how, and make a structure and arguments around it. Okay, anyone want to tell me what's wrong with this image? Hmm? It's portrait, yes, and pixelated, thank you. And also very abstract diagrams that almost look identical to each other. Unless you know the project very well, from the assessor point of view, it's too abstract for us to understand it, okay? Anyone want to tell me what's wrong with this? Come on. I'll give you a clue. Font sizes, they're all over the place. Yeah. There's like, you know, different colors of fonts. It's not really necessary in any of sort of graphic layouts, right? Um, there's an issue about this sort of things really tell us whether you have a sense of sensibility in graphic design or not. Where you have image overlapping your key unintentionally, because if it's intentional, this line will either be all the way down here or all the way up. It's neither nor. All right? Little things like this really show us whether you are a careful designer or not. Okay? When you have three rendered images, they all look the same. They're all about the same thing. They are actually an aerial view of the same model. Why do you need to show them three times? Just show them once. Show us one good one. That's all we need. You know, we are not your parents. We don't need you to keep telling us the same thing. Or oh, you are not our parents anyway. What's wrong with this? Apart from lack of annotations, there's also a lack of keys, no? We have some beautiful watercolor drawings. But I have no idea what it's actually about, apart from some of the very beautiful watercolors. So how am I as an assessor be able to start to understand your project from that sort of level? So you need to start to put yourself in our shoes and actually look at your portfolio page, individual page, there's only 15 pages to go through, look at them carefully. Tell us how am I going to read this information. <laughs> These are fascinating diagrams. Um, but I don't actually understand it, do you? To me, it's just a series of graphic lines. The text are so m small that I, even if I zoom in 500 times, I couldn't actually read the words. Okay? So I think you've got a very clear idea of what do and don'ts. I'll show you another one. This is more about techniques now. I thought it's probably good to also just to drum it in. I'm sure all your studios has already done that to you. But now it's probably a time just for me to remind you. This is a render from Sparks a few years ago. Right. Um, tell me what's wrong with it. <coughs> Blurry, yep. Yeah. Partly pixelated. The background actually image is quite poor. It's pixelated. Tell me else, tell me something else. This architectural. There's a problem with it. Look at the size of the bin and the size of the people. Look at how this building at one point is four story, by the time we turn around the corner, it's seven story tall. Yeah, there's a problem with the perspective constructions in this image. It's fundamentally wrong, okay? And it's really important for you to be self-critical with your own work. If the image is fundamentally wrong, then from my, if I were you, I would have spent another two hours readjusting it, re-rendering it, and put something decent in my portfolio. I'll do it once, because then I don't have to do it again at the end of my you know, graduate school when I want to apply for a job. Because I'm not going to be able to show you, um, my, my employee this sort of image. Right? And things like perspective, especially in perspective, it really shows whether you can control scales or not. And we are really looking for how well you can control your scale. When you have rendered image that has no shadows, it doesn't match the site, it's really problematic, no? To me, the most disturbing thing is actually the scale issue. The fact that I can look at this and go, this is four-story tall building. Actually, yeah, that's fine. It's kind of nice scale. Turn around in the seven-story tall building. I mean, I don't know what world we live in, but <laughs> that doesn't come right. People have done DDF or virtual environments would know this. Tell me what's wrong with this image. It's a photograph that we see all the time. 
Yeah. Okay. So busy background. It's not set up properly. What else? Look, these are things that Studio Air, Studio uh, Virtual Environments, all the other studios will have taught you by now. All right? You have images that is insufficient contrast. There's not even in focus in part of it. You have objects at all level angles that we don't even know whether you want us to look at the elevations or you want us to look at the uh, plan or you want us to look at it as axonometric. We have really distracting backgrounds at the end that almost look, you know, we constantly get this, you know, you take a picture of it with your laundry is still at the back. Please don't show us your laundry. We don't need to see it. Okay, just kind of a reminder in terms of what good photographs should be and make sure you take it with enough light. You all have you've done that, you know, from visualizing environment all the way up from your first year to now. You've done all this. We had to be drumming down your mind for the last three years. Just show us that you can actually be able to control and have a sensibility to control images. These are images from the uh, virtual environments about two years ago. And these are first year images. So if you can take this sort of photograph in first year, then we shouldn't be expecting to see anything less when you're handing your photograph or in your portfolio. All right? Very quick about writing project descriptions. Please do not give us a hundred, two hundred page, hundred, three hundred words or splur about your project and sometime actually describing your project in minute detail, not necessary. Project descriptions should be about what is the site, what is the issue, what is the concept, what is the design strategy, what is your design response. Keep it to a hundred words or less. All right? This actually is slightly a little bit long. This is a little bit over 150. So this is probably as maximum as you should get for individual project and put it next to your drawings. I isolate this out for teaching purpose for to tell you guys what the content should be. All right, last thing is personal statement. Okay, so your personal statement should include your prior study your previous work or volunteer experience, your mo motivation to undertake the program, and when you envisage your career going. So we'll be judging on this sort of criteria, which is the content, the demonstration, understanding of programs, use of relevant examples, indicate prior studies or volunteer work, articulate your personal motivations, including future career plan. We are very much interested in whether you can write articulate clearly and be able to express and communicate yourself. Okay, at the end of the day, it's still about communications. Think of this, this is like an ap application letter when you go to office, all right? It's the same sort of structure. So I just want to expand a little bit. Your prior study, keep this to a single paragraph. If you already include your CV, we should know it very well. There's no need to really extensively repeat it. We still get three pages of personal statements and people spend the first page of 500 words or 300 words talking about their educations at starting from high school. I don't need to know that. All right? Previous work and volunteers work. Make sure it's relevant. Working in the McDonald's, not relevant. Okay? I volunteer to do some humanity work in Cambodia, very relevant. Okay? I, am in, I do... Um, I participate in the local sustainability groups and drive local social agendas, very relevant, okay? So make sure you understand what is relevant and what is not. Third point, your motivation to understand the program. Please do not recite your childhood ambitions to become an architect. I see these nine out of 10 in every single personal statement, okay? My dream is to become an architect. I play with a architecture toy when I was young. We all do, <laughs> all right? We do not need to write, I do not need to know about this. You are far better off using that 300 words to write about something else that are really going to be powerful. Like tell us, why do you actually enjoy architecture? What make you click? What is your passion about architecture? And what is the strength in your weakness? Those are far more powerful and much more informing to us as assessor than telling me that you have a Ganji set or you play with transformer. Last one, when you, how, where do you envisage your career going? Tell us your area of interest. 
a lot of people by now, most of you by now, by end of blockchain environments, will already kind of know where your area of interest, whether it's in sustainability, whether it's in social or cultural agendas, whether it's in political agendas, whether in digital work, or whether in combinations of historical work, whether it's conservations. Do tell us that. Tell us where your interest is. All right? Go to the MSD website, look at the program, tell us if there's any things in there that actually interest you. Okay? Don't come in and say, well, you know, I don't be bachelor environments, I expect to be in MSD and therefore I understand the program. Tell us exactly what you're interested in MSD. All right? Make sure you spell your institution name correctly. <laughs> yeah? I have people who write University of Melbourne in America or something like that. And people do do that. Or worst of all, use someone else's institution name on it, which means that you basically replicated this letter 300 times. All right, finally, ask your peer or your tutor to proofread your document before submitting the file to slide room. Okay, very, very important. If your peer do not understand what you're talking about, very, very likely that I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, if your peer started to go, well, actually, you know what? Give it to your mom and dad, give it to your grandma. If they, un if they can understand your work, that is amazing achievement. It means that you can actually communicate your project very well. All right, just a few things, just conclude. That's the website. If you want external reference, here's are some books that will be able to guide you along. Um, those are design books. There's a lot of, let's say, there's a lot of literatures out the side to tell you how to put a portfolio together. Here's a few websites which I found really, um, let's say, it's a, uh, Lex is well articulated and they actually give you a very simple point which you can actually follow and actually great as a reminder. So do use them if you can.